to this pod vid on heroes or part nine which is the formation of your army on the table now we've already covered the formation of forces in terms of individual elements but this one is going to take it a little bit further and start talking about uh, formations in the much larger sense now let me set an interesting guiding principle here and that is that the armies are intended to be about a third of the size of the combat units that existed at each level two important factors here one is the third of the size of everything and it's not as simple as just cutting everything into three and I'll come on to that in just a second but secondly we're talking combat we're not looking at the staff or the general admin troops that are involved at company battalion brigade and division level we're talking purely and simply the guys at the sharp end who were in combat cutting a formation into three isn't really as simple as it sounds because if you have for argument's sake four machine guns well what do you call that is that one or is that two quite often units had headquarters formations and there were individual or odd weapons at that level that didn't necessarily divide easily into three so what the guiding principle I've taken is in terms of weapons is that to use our company as an example at company level you see that we've got a two inch mortar and three light machine guns that give or take is about a third of the size of the number of weapons that were available at the time and once we get up to battalion level we've got kind of a third of the number of weapons and so on and so forth and you'll see this when we start looking at the armoured formations as well. So we start off with a formation that we're very familiar with and I'm using British troops all the way through here and that is our infantry platoon. So we have our NCO, seven riflemen and then two guys with a light machine gun and throughout Heroes All you'll find that the terms are somewhat generic around weapons the scale is such that we can't get into the minor details of rounds per minute etc etc so we're talking here about light machine gun here's the basic formation of 10 figures now naturally in most armies if you put a number of platoons together you end up with a company and so that's what we've got here we've got three platoons and then we've got a company headquarters platoon now in this particular case reading from left to right the group at the back here we have two guys with some kind of anti-tank weapon now this is a piat but it could be an anti-tank rifle then we in the center we have a two-man two-inch mortar or light mortar team and on the right we've got the company officer the co who appears in the rules who may or may not appear on the table but we have him as a base and of course if you put four of these companies together you end up with a uh, infantry battalion but of course the battalion also has a headquarters and a number of other elements now these four elements are shown here so back left you've got the anti-tank platoon which in our case at this stage in the war is a pair of two pounders with their three-man crews and a pair of uh, toes I think they're dragon toes back right is the mortar platoon now that's a pair of three inch mortars like the one shown here and alongside them a two-man spotter team with a carrier bottom right you have the carrier platoon this is a standard 10-man platoon but allocated three carriers for ease of transport and a bit of scouting around and bottom left you have the assault pioneer platoon which is five riflemen plus one guy with a man pack flamethrower carried around in a pair of carriers and then you've got a two pound anti-tank gun again with a tow what we don't have here is the commander of this battalion the battalion commander who as a two-man base doesn't need to be shown because he's going to rarely appear on the table when we get on to fight your own wars you'll find that the battalion the battle group becomes the key element when moving around a map so the battle group commander does have an important role but he still doesn't need to be shown so he's not present now of course uh, two or three battalions form a brigade 
and two or three brigades make up a division and at divisional level there are various troop elements that can be allocated down to the battalions down to the battle groups as and when required and some of them are shown here we start with divisional engineers and we've got three platoons like this one made up of an NCO plus engineers and some form of transport and these are the guys that are carting around uh, wire explosives and this sort of thing that are needed by division to blow things up and repair things and on the subject of repairing things that have been blown up or replacing things that have been blown up there is at divisional level a bridging unit shown here as a scout car and a couple of trucks with the pontoons now of course in the later part of the war 1944 onwards this became somewhat more sophisticated and your bridging units may turn out to be something like this Churchill bridge layer next we've got the divisional anti-tank guns now until 1942 this was still the good old two pounder but of course the six pounder arrived in 42 and later the 17 pounder but a pair of guns with uh, suitable toes and crews for air defense we've got the trusty Bofors 40 mil these are paired off into sections and we've got six of these such weapons available for use at divisional level field artillery much used by the British Army and very good it was too so here is our battery of four 25 pounders with their toes and of course uh, in a carrier a pair of spotters now we've already seen that in terms of reconnaissance the carrier platoons were allocated down to the battalions but there were some other assets as part of the reconnaissance squadron that division could allocate and that included three two pound anti-tank guns very useful if you're out facing the enemy and also another uh, platoon of three inch mortars and then we have the machine gun company which again tended to be spread around rather than used as a, a fixed unit and this comprised uh, two sections each of a pair of medium machine guns with some kind of transport and then uh, a pair of 4.2 inch heavy mortars that could be used for local artillery action. Now in the early part of the war the British used two slightly different types of armoured regiment one very much based around infantry tanks and the other based around cruiser tanks so 4th and 7th Royal Tank Regiments which were the infantry tank ones started with the regimental headquarters which in the war games world my war games world comprises a Matilda II and a Vickers and then for each of these regiments you ended up with three companies later referred to as squadrons but in 4th and 7th referred to as companies comprising a company headquarters which was a simple Vickers and then four infantry tanks and of course in the early part of the war that was a good old Matilda one normally some with machine guns and some with the heavy machine gun option now in the cruiser tank regiments and we're looking at third royal tank regiment as an example here it was slightly different uh, they didn't have a regimental headquarters or we haven't given them a regimental headquarters they comprise very simply three squadrons that each comprise of a close support tank in our case uh, it's an a9 cs and then four tanks that were either a9s a10s or a13s and they were they they, they they tended to be one squadron one type of tank so it would be a pair of cruisers and then a pair of vickers to get the right number of tanks and to get some kind of balance in the formation in heroes all the fourth squadron comprises a scout car and just a couple of cruisers and that gives us 14 tanks in a regiment which kind of multiplies up to the right sort of number that the armoured divisions had so we've seen the armoured regiment the armoured brigades were made up of three such armoured regiments and attached to them was a motor battalion this is a standard battalion of infantry as we've seen earlier but lorried so they could move around so you had two armoured brigades in the armoured division then you for reconnaissance you had an armoured car regiment that was made up of three squadrons 
each comprising an armoured car in the, as headquarters and then three armoured car troops. And then you had a support group and that tended to be our artillery regiment, so a pair of batteries we saw earlier of the 25 pounders. You had two batteries of four two pounder anti-tank guns. You had two batteries of the anti-aircraft weapons, but in this case they were Lewis guns, uh, light machine guns mounted on tripods. And in the support group you had a further motor battalion. It was also a complement of engineers and all that if you look at the numbers of troops, the number of vehicles, works out at about the third of the size of a British armoured division as it existed between October 40 and February 42. So this is a good opportunity to remind you that the Fight Your Own Battles and Heroes All Rules are available as a free download, as are also the set of Codex cards. Now there is literally hundreds of these cards one is available for all generic weapons and of course for each of the vehicles that appear on your table. So whether you're using A9s or A10s or Vickers or whatever it happens to be, there's a codex card that gives you all the information you need about that particular vehicle or weapon. Now the last type of force I'm going to mention here is the commando companies for the British. Formed in 1940, 10 independent companies raised really for the Norway campaign and they tended to be quite fluid. The commando companies uh, on the war games table comprise the company headquarters, which is our commanding officer plus his radio man. He has a support unit, which is two men with a two-inch mortar and two men with a light machine gun, and then a pair of platoons comprising eight men, that's an NCO, and seven others, all armed with submachine guns. And bear in mind, of course, that they carry grenades as well, and being elite troops, they have the ability in the rules to be able to carry uh, a heavier load than normal men so they can carry explosives and all sorts of things to do whatever they're in, applied to do. Well I hope that's given you a bit of a flavour for the sort of formations that I'm using. I know I focused on the British and the German formations were somewhat different but when uh, Fight Your Own Wars comes out there is going to be a supplement on uh, campaign organisation of armies and you'll get much more detail but in the interim I'm sure it, uh, you're all capable of working out a third of everything and coming down with your own formations and of course at the end of the day the formations that you're happy with are the formations that you should be playing with. I'm off to put some of these formations on my new table and try my new hill system out. More of that in the next video. I'll see you soon. Thank you very much for your interest in what I do. There's more information at www.fightyourownbattles.co.uk Like, subscribe for more, hit that notifications bell and when there's more to come, you'll be the first to know.